Good day class, it's your biology teacher once again, Kalawale A.O. Today we are going to treat an interesting topic which is a secretory system. Wow, so interesting. We can see this animal there, the grasshopper, the earthworm and the planaria. The excretory system. But before we proceed to this um, topic, we'd like to perform an activity or let's just reason about an activity. And this activity is just about jumping. When you try to jump on your feet 10 good times, 20 times, there is something that is going to come out of your body, which is sweat. It has been produced from the sweat gland and it passes through the sweat pore of the skin. And then, as you jump up, there is a poisonous gas that is needed to be expelled out of the body that passes through your mouth, sometimes your nose, in the nostrils, and that is what? Carbon dioxide. And those are excretory products. By now, you should be able to know what is meant by excretion. Excretion should be the removal of what? Nitrogenous waste product. That's As you can see on the screen, excretion is the physiological process by which an organism disposes of its nitrogenous byproducts through a special organ or system. From the activity we reason the all the time, you are going to see that the byproducts or the unwanted um, gas passes through an organ or system, the organ which I call the nostrils. The, the, the system is called the, the a respiratory system the, the lungs and then if you look at the skin where the sweat comes out it's also an organ and it means for us to have a good um, concise definition of excretion it must be a physiological process that happens within the body we already know that and it disposes of its nitrogenous byproduct it is only a byproduct that is not needed by the body that it's move out and where do they move out through the special organ or system? However, ejection and excretion should uh, should be shouldn't be confused with excretion. That is that is another fact. We shouldn't um, confuse ejection and secretion. Now, what is ejection? Ejection is the removal of solid undigested food substances and are not metabolic byproducts. We already know our ejection from digestive system. And this ejection means um, the removal of um, undigested solid um, material that becomes um, um, semi-solid in form of feces. Some textbook when they see um, ejection, the removal of this feces from the anus, they call it um, excretion, which is the last stage of their own um, digestive system. And to me, it is not. So it is called ejection because there is no nitrogen, it is, it, it, the, the physiological process does not take place and there is no nitrogenous byproduct there. It's just the, the undigested food materials that it didn't digest that is moved out and that should be called digestion. And again, what is secretion on the other hand? Secretion on the other hand is the production of useful substances such as hormones and enzymes by metabolic processes in the body. Yes, hormones are produced in the body, enzymes are produced um, from the glands in the certain organ. Now, all these things are secretions. They are not um, waste products. And also, the hormones are not nitrogenous waste products, and then the enzymes also. So that is why we can know we should be very careful in um, relating ejection and secretion with excretion okay having understood um excretion digestion and secretion we should move to the term excretory system excretory system should be the combination of all the organs associated 
with the removal of metabolic waste product out of the body of an organism through a special organ or system. So this term around, when we say what is system? System is the combination of organs. So since we're talking about excretion, excretory system will be the combination of organs associated with the removal of metabolic waste product out of the body of an organism through a special organ. It must pass through a special space, space out of their body. I think this is well understood. Shall we proceed to the next class? If you do not understand, you do not understand, you can you can just um, move your video player backward and try to replay it once again. Okay. And here we have the importance of excretion. Excretion is very important now. Is very important in our body as a living organism. If we do not excrete, it means um, the organism will die. Because excretion is the removal of nitrogenous waste products, byproducts which are not useful in our body, they need to be removed. So, on this, one of the importance is to maintain short balance in the body. Just like we have um, excretion in amoeba, or let's say osmoregulation with the use of um, vacuoles, you will see that um, the vacuole helps to maintain balance between salt and water and that is what we call osmoregulation it's part of what is uh what we understand by the term excretion so there must be a balance between salt and water which we call homeostasis if there is no balance between salt and water then the body will lack one and then it can eventually affect some organs of the body so when there is too much water there is an organ or system that has to remove that and when there is too much salt, there is also an organ or system that helps to remove that. Also, it also helps to maintain water balance in the body. Just like I said earlier, as it helps to maintain salt balance in the body. Again, importance of excretion, it helps to remove harmful metabolic byproducts from the body, like the sweat, like the carbon dioxide, like the mineral salt. So these are harmful metabolic byproducts from the body it has to remove it another one it does not allow accumulation of poisonous material within the body when this um poisonous material accumulates within the body they are harmful to the body they can eventually cause the death of this organism and that is what led us to the last importance of excretion which is it has to keep an organism alive when they are not they, 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 there is no act when this um there is no accumulation of poisonous materials within the body then the body is alive. The, body, the, the, the organism cannot, cannot die. So, that is importance of excretion. Excretion system of some organisms. Like you see it in the screen, we have amoeba, a primitive organism, a primitive animal. They use the, the, the contratile vacuole. We also have the flatworm example of the flatworm here, which we'll be using as step one. They make use of the flame cell. All these we're going to talk about them later. The analytes, which are the H1, they make use of the nephridia as their excretory organ or the excretory system. The insect makes use of their of the malphigian tubules. The crustaceans make use of green glands. The fishes make use of kidneys. The amphibians um that is the toe they also make use of kidneys the right eyes make use of um kidneys the birds make use of um kidney and lungs the mammals make use of skin kidneys liver and lungs then um the flowering plants make use of stomach and, st and lentil cells you could see that um as we mentioned that of animal, we must mention that of plants, and that's why we mentioned plants where they make use of stomach and lentil cells. And then again, if you look at the amphibians, we say the make use of kidney. We can also say the make use of their uh the, the, their lungs to remove um carbon dioxide and even the mouth. That is that for some organisms and their excretory system or organs. Please. You need to note these organisms and their excretory system are organs. Let's move. 
and this slide is telling us about excretory organs and their waste products. Like we have here, number one, we have the chondrotide vacuole, the chondrotide vacuole, which is for a primitive organism like amoeba, removes carbon dioxide, ammonia, and water. The flame cell, which is for the platea mintis, the tapeworm, rather the tapeworm, they help to remove um, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and water. The nephridia, which is for H1, has to remove water, carbon dioxide, and nitrogenous waste. Mafigian tubules for insects, they have to remove water, carbon dioxide, and uric acid. Green glands for crustaceans have to remove water, carbon dioxide, urea, and ammonia. So, gills for um, fishes, yes, the fishes also make use of the gills and the kidney. Um, they have to remove carbon dioxide, water, and urea. The skin for mammals have to remove sweat containing urea, salt, and water. The lungs have to remove carbon dioxide and water vapor. The kidneys, urine containing urea, salt water, hormones, and uric acid. Salt water, hormones, and uric acid. The stomata and lenticel for plants have to remove water, carbon dioxide, and oxygen, while the bark of trees have to remove them. The tannins, mucilage, gums, crystals, and to sign in alkaloid, resins, oil, and lattice. These are excreted organ and your waste product. So when you hear the excreted organ like um, kidney, you should be able to tell us they help to remove um, urine containing urea, salt, what salts, water, hormones, and uric acid. The gills, what do they remove? Carbon dioxide, water, and urea. The, the green glass, what do they remove? So these are what you are expected to learn in this um on the slide. The mechanism of excretion in some invertebrate organism. We want to study the mechanism of excretion in some invertebrate, like we've studied in amoeba, like we've studied in H1, like we've um, like we've mentioned right here in amoeba, in H1, um, in analytes, and the likes. And that is what we want to understand here. How do they make use of these organs or system for the removal of the nitrogenous waste products? that happen physiologically within the organisms. Lead us to the H1. As you can see, the H1, they have a mucus on the body, they are very moist, and then again, they use their peristomium and the, um, to, to penetrate the, the soil, and then move the burrow inside the soil. Now, how do they remove their waste products from the special um, organ called nephridia. Description of the nephridia. The nephridia are the excretory organs of the H1. Each segment of the body, except the first tree, except the first tree, you can see from, from, from this place, one, two, three, except this first tree segment has a pair of tubes called nephridia. And you can see, from four, we have nephridia down. And then, each nephridia has a ciliated funnel called the nephrostome, which opens to the outside through a small pore called nephridiopore. The nephridiopore, so it means we have two openings. We have the nephrostome and the nephridiopore. This open, the nephridiopore now opens into the body cavity of the segment sorry, not the nephridiopore, um, the nephrostome, opens into the body cavity of the segment in the front. The nephrostome lead into, sorry, the statement here, this opening to the body cavity of the segment in the front, which we're talking about the nephridia. And then the nephrostome, which is the, the, the upper part of the nephridia, leads into a long coil tube called the nephridial tube made up of a narrow ciliated tube, a middle ciliated tube, and a wide non ciliated tube. Look at it. From the nephrostome to uh, an nephridia tubule called the narrow ciliated tube, the middle ciliated tube, and a wide non ciliated tube. Uh, a wide non ciliated tube and a muscular tube which opens to the exterior through 
and a spiritual power called nephridio power. Like we've said, it moves, waste material moves from the nef nephrostome to the nephridio power. And um, in the tubule, we have the um, narrow ciliated tube, we have the middle ciliated tube and the wide non ciliated tube and the muscular tube which opens to the uh, exterior which is known as the nephridium 4. The nephridium does open at both ends, that is the both sides. According to their position in the body, there are three types of nephridia. We have the pharyngeal nephridia. You can see it where we, we target A. This is the pharyngeal nephridia. We have the integumentary nephridia. This is it here where we have B. And we have the septal nephridia where we have the C. And that is that for um, the atrium. Don't forget, atrium makes use of nephridia as their organ for. Uh... Let's now look at the mechanism. How does this nephridia, how does waste material move along this nephridia with the, 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 the terms we've used? from the nephrostome to the nephridial pore. Along the nephrostome, along the, the tube, is some, um, is four tubule which lead them from the nephrostome to the nephridial pore. We have the um, narrow ciliated tube, we have the middle ciliated tube, we have the wide non ciliated tube, and we have a muscular tubule before it gets to the Nephridium pore. Now let's look at the mechanism here. Each nephridium is surrounded by a capillary network. The waste products, mainly urea, are extracted from the blood capillaries surrounding nephridia. Waste products are also removed from the from the fluid into the body cavity and pass into the funnel. Fluid containing waste products move through the long tubules of the nephridia. Along the way, certain other substances that are useful to the body are reabsorbed through the walls of the tubules. Where are salt and water reabsorbed that are important, that are useful to the body, so that the body do, does not lack salt and water? There must be balance between salt and water. Now, where are they reabsorbed back into the body? It is the tubule. Along the tubule, where we have the narrow ciliated tube, where we have the um, middle ciliated tube, and where we have the um, wide non ciliated tube. Then after that, what will happen? The unabsorbed substances, including water, collects in the muscular tube, the part of the tubule, the muscular tube, as what? Urine. The excretory pore, the excretory pore relaxes to allow the urine to escape to the exterior. H1, get rid of carbon dioxide during gaseous exchange through the moist body surface or skin. That is that for the mechanism of excretion in H1. Please do not forget, it is nephridium. And then, this is the image of the nephridia H1. From here, you can see the nephrostome, the nephrostome, and then materials, blood capillaries, or their connection of blood capillaries, this place receives the blood, and then the blood moves from the the blood is mixed with the nitrogenous waste product. It moves from the nephrostom and then through this tubule. As it moves through this tubule, you will see the narrow ciliated tube, and then it moves down again to the middle ciliated tube, which is where we have the brown ciliated. Then it moves down to the what? The wide non ciliated um, tube. As it moves down this tubule from the narrow to the wide non ciliated tube. Mineral and salt and water are reabsorbed that are useful to the body are reabsorbed back into the body and at the muscular tubule This is where they are converted to urine and then they move out through the nephridio pore This is just the image of the nephridia. Please take note of this image It is important for any biology student to be able to draw this image. Please go and learn the diagram move to another organism which is the insects the insect the stomach run we are going to the we are going to describe the um excretory system of the insect which is the marfigian tubules the organs responsible for excretion in the insect are the marfigian tubules these are outgrowth 
from the exterior portion of the small intestine. They are fine, long and slender. The morphigian tubules are found floating between glands and organs in most parts of the torus and abdomen. The morphigian tubules are found in six groups, each containing a twelve of twelve tubules. A morphigian tubule consists of two parts, the distal, which is the free end, and the proximal end, the portion next to the gut. This is the description of the uh, morphigian tubule of the insect. Now let's look at the mechanism of excretion in insects. The mechanism through which they make use of this morphigian tubule. Nitrogen is spread in water which are liberated into the hemocyl. Don't forget, um, insects they make use of hemocyl, which is the close, um, close um, transport system. Hemocyl are absorbed. That sorry, open transport system where all organs are bait, are baited within a, an open space. That is the hemocyl, open transport system, and are absorbed at the distal end of the morphigian tubules. The nitrogenous waste con converted to uric acid as it passes along the morphigian tubule towards the guts. Look at it. The morphigian, the nitrogenous waste are converted to uric acid as it passes along the morphigian tubule towards the, the gut. It means as the nitrogenous waste are moving uh, along the tubule, they keep on reabsorbing water back into the body and then salts that are needed back into the body and then they make the, the waste product to be concentrated in such that it gives a uric acid. A uric acid lacks um, what it looks like a paste. So that we do see in um, the, the, the fees of a cheek, of our end, the chicken, that's, that, that's, the, that's an example of what we can call the uric acid. So it looks like a paste, that is what they're going to release out. A lot of water is also reabsorbed so that by the time the uric acid reaches the proximal end of the tubules, it is changed into solid crystals, the solid crystals. In the end gut, more water is reabsorbed by the rectal gland, thus, the urine with feces, which eventually leaves the body, is very concentrated, almost a dry solid. So it means um, it is urine and feces that combines together to form what is called the uric acid. And as you can see, we see that um, in the tubules, water are reabsorbed back into the body. And when it reaches the proximal end of the tubule, don't forget we have the distal and the proximal end. Um, at the proximal end, what is going to happen at the end gut? more water is reabsorbed to the, by the rectal gland, thus the urine with feces, which eventually leaves the body, is very concentrated and they look like a, a paste. Of the morphigian tubule in this insect, can we see this insect? We try to magnify the image and this is the mid gut, this is the hind gut. Look at, at each but we have the morphigian tubule. Look at this is a morphigian tubule, morphigian tubule, morphigian tubule are surrounded here at the mid gut towards the hind gut. So now, as these absorb material, the morphigian tubule here absorb the material, it moves down this uh, tubule. As it moves down this tubule, water is reabsorbed and salt is reabsorbed back into the body. And as it moves down, it moves until it gets to the hind gut. Where yeah, more water is reabsorbed by to the body, this place is the proxima, why this is the um, distal, and at here, water is reabsorbed back to the body, and then towards the iron guard here, um, the, there is what is called excretion, which is the release of uric acid and feces, the use of urine and feces, which forms what we call uric um, acid. That is that for. Um, Excretion in insects, they make use of the morphigian tubule for their excretory organ. Let's look at flatworms. The flatworms, generally, we know they make use of flame cells for the excretion of their waste product. Now, let's describe the flame cells. The excretory organs of the flame cells, especially the free living plant areas, are the flame cells. In these animals, there are two longitudinal excretory canals with a number of openings to the exterior on the body surface. The canal consists of numerous branches tubules. The fine end of the tubules 
and especially other structures called flame cells. In a flame cell, the nucleus is displaced to one side of the cell and the cytoplasm has a large hollow called the cell lumen. The lumen is continuous with the fine tubules, a bunch of flagella and down the lumen. We are going to see what we're talking about um, in the next slide or uh, after the mechanism. Okay, the image is here right here, the mechanism of excretion of flat homes. The waste product, especially water, ammonia, and carbon dioxide diffuses from the surrounding cells. That is from the body of the cell, from the body of the organism, the internal, the cellular walls of the organism into the flame cells. It moves into the flame cells all this, through this cytoplasmic process. You can see all this cytoplasmic process. It moves into them with the aid of this flagella. Look at it. We can see this ciliary, uh, the flagella here. Then when they move through, what will happen? The fluid containing the waste product is propelled into the tubules. It enters into these tubules. From there, the fluid passes into the exterior. As it enters through this tubule, it propels out through the ciliary flame and then moves down through the intercellular dot and to the intercellular uh, through the intracellular dot and to the intercellular dot where it is expelled out through their body surface. So the flagella here is the cytoplasmic world process where it moves. And this is the description of the flame cell. Where we say we have the nucleus, we have the lumen, look at the lumen, and we have the, you can see the basal granules, we, are, we can see the ciliary flame, we can see the cell lumen, this is the lumen here, yeah? and then material moves down through the intercellular dot and Lastly, to the intracellular dot, then um, through the body surface, which are um, the ammonia, water, and carbon dioxide uh, and diffuses out of the body of the organism, the flatworm. So, example of flatworm, which we've mentioned earlier on, is um, planaria. Another common example, which we know, is tapeworm. To the hand of um, excretory system in um, invertebrate, the smaller organism. Thanks for listening, the quote of the day. You can't even begin to understand biology. You can't understand life unless you understand what it's all there for, how it arose. You can't understand this process or else you understand what the organs are there for. And that is why it is important for us to understand everything around us. This is one of the reasons why biology is very interesting. You as an example of biology, and then all the organisms around you, both plants and animals, are also examples of biology. Hence, biology is simple. Insects can be seen anywhere. You can all you can you can you can take it to the laboratory, you can um um, study the excretory organ, and again, um, H1 can also be seen everywhere. You can also do this, so it means it is important as a biologist or as a biology student to understand life on, uh, and then understand what they are there for and how it arose. This quote is um, written by Richard Dawkins. Thank you very much once again. I remain your humble biology teacher, Kalawale AO. So we miss next class.